Good afternoon. Uh, Bill Fuentes here again with uh, Hartford Technical High School Welding. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and do another class on one of the machines inside the shop. And um, this one is very important because this is a new machine and we need to make sure that we take care of our equipment. And since it's new, we want to keep it working in good condition. What we have is a horizontal cutoff saw um, made by Clausen and it's um, it's smaller than our normal cutoff saw but it works a lot better. What we're going to do with the machine itself is we're going to go ahead and orientate ourselves to the new machine for the orientations part. We're going to check for safety and make sure that everything's good on it that needs to be good before we put it in operation. We're going to do the pre-inspection, which is before we start cutting. We're, we'll pick a piece of material and we'll work with a piece of material um, that is part of the um, class to say what thickness and material can, it can cut. Then, of course, our normal stuff, which is cleanup. The, the questions that I want you to be uh, conscious of when you're taking notes, and yes, you need to take notes. We talked about this before in the vertical bandsaw, which is a blade kerf, right? You have to keep that in mind also with the cutoff saw because the blade has got a thickness and you need to make sure that you account when you measure. The second thing is tolerance in anything that we do, especially in the printing layout, all the other operations that we have, we have a tolerance. Because layout is where you get your correct measurements and tolerance when we do that. And measuring. While we're measuring it, we'll explain how to measure the piece of material to make sure that you get a good cut on the cutoff saw. So the first thing that we want to do is orientate ourselves to the saw. This is our new shop friend. This is a horizontal cutoff saw, which replaces the old one. So the first part of this, when we orientate ourselves, you need to know what the controls are on the machine. If you take a look on the far right of the control box, this is a, a, um, a uh, tension adjuster. So it's numbered from 1 to 10 and the, the higher it is, the faster the arm comes down. Okay? This one is your on and off switch for using the tensioner. That's the next one in line. The third one in line is going to be our coolant. We need to use the coolant to cut anything that we're cutting. You don't cut things dry on this machine. The fourth one is our, our start button. The fifth one is the light, say that it's operational. And the sixth one is our e-stop. We did talk about the e-stop when we were uh, using the vertical bandsaw. So the e-stop is just like it is. You press it on, it stops. The e-stop is mainly for emergencies, but it also controls the on-off switch. So once you press it in, it'll stop it automatically. You turn it to the right and it pops out. That is our control box. The next thing that we want to look at down here on the front part you have this brush. This brush cleans the blade. So this always has to be in contact with the blade and when we start using this to cut you need to make sure that this is clean at all times. 
The other two um, functions that you need to consider while you're looking at this machine is right here. This is the on-off um, toggles for the coolant. If you take a look, the hose goes from this side over to the guide on this side. This hose goes to the guide on this side. So it's actually hitting the, the blade before it cuts and hitting the blade after it cuts. The blade itself, there are certain sizes that this has to be. So to keep ourselves straight, what you do normally in any kind of shop and we looked at it in the vertical uh, bandsaw also, is you need to put the size of the blade just in case somebody needs to know what size it is when they order or acquire another blade. So this blade size is written up here and it'll always stay there. This is a 132 inch blade. Now, we haven't talked about the pitch of the blade, but eventually we'll talk about the pitch of the blade, and the pitch is how many teeth per inch, right? So this blade, it's hard to see. I don't know if we could get a good glimpse right here. This pitch on this blade is probably about five or six. So this is designed to cut real thick metal, right? This is six, six teeth per inch. One of the things that we have to do is we have to get this machine ready to, to operate. This electrical up here is shared. So the machine over here uses this electrical, so you're not going to be able to use both of these machines at the same time using this plug. So what we need to do is get the cord, the electrical cord, away from the machine while we're operating. So we're going to use zip ties and we're going to put this up here so it moves out of the way. So now that's up out of the way. It should be not interfering with us when we do our cuts. Now, again, I had explained about the way this cord works, but I want to re recall that is when you plug it in, it turns and locks. So you unplug it, then you plug it back in and then turn it and it locks into place. It's a safety feature. One of the things that I'd like you to pay attention to, there's a guard right here. This guard is to go over the blade. Your hands need to be away from the blade at all times. That's one of the safety features. So the guard needs to be there. Also, this does not have a dead man switch or a automatic switch like we do on the vertical bandsaw that if it's not pressed, the machine won't work. So these two guards need to be locked down before you start operating the machine. Now, any time that you see any of these yellow signs, those are supposed to be there for a reason. You need to make sure that you know that there's a moving saw blade because that's a safety issue. And you need to make sure that you keep your hands out of this area. If this is open and I turned on the machine, the blade would still run with those guards up. So everything has to be put down, ready to go, and moving. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put in, and I'll explain, the cutting fluid, okay?
on the cutting fluid down here at the bottom portion of this this whole thing is a tank down at the bottom portion down here is a sight glass the sight glass is designed that you can can tell how much cutting fluid is within this machine we are going to use the cutting fluid that came with the machine and I'll explain the ratio that needs to happen. Most of the time when you get a cutting fluid, it'll tell you what the ratio is on the label, right? So this is a cutting fluid that came with this machine and right now the strongest one that we could have because we have to make an, a, a, a a conscious decision to put which kind of ratio it needs to be so we want it as, as strong as possible so that's seven to one if I've got a gallon here one gallon of the fluid plus seven gallons of water equals the ratio that we need to have in the tank The type of fluid is different because this is water soluble. Water soluble means that it mixes with water. But since I got it all on my hands, we haven't really looked at the, the material data safety sheets or what they call them now, data safety sheets, to figure out if anything is toxic. A lot of this stuff is environmentally safe and not toxic, but we gotta make sure. So if you get some on your hands, be careful we got to clean our hands and make sure that they're nice and clean and washed after we do our operation. Let that sit there for a while, waste not, want not. So again, once we put a gallon of um, cutting fluid, we're going to put seven gallons of water. Again, the correct disposal of this is going to be on the material or data safety sheet and it'll tell you if you could go ahead and just put it in recycling or if it has to be disposed of in different ways. In this container is about five gallons. This should be a five gallon container. I'm gonna go and get a little bit more water because we still need about seven gallons. We're gonna fill that about a third of the way and finish filling the tank. <laughs> 